Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Expedition the Role Playing Card Game. Expedition the Role Playing Card Game is for one to six player, it takes about 20 minutes to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. And that's going to depend on the time based on the type of story you're going to be playing. So, in the game Expedition, you're going to be an adventurer, or you're going to be a band of adventurers, and you're going to pick a story. Now, it's an app based game that has cards as well, and you're going to be rolling dice, and you're going to choose one of the stories and go through it. As you do so, you you're going to have timed uh, fights and you're going to have different choices throughout the game that you're going to have to go back and forth on. Like, do I want to save the townspeople? Do I want to fight them? And as you do that, you're going to have to fight monsters. You're going to gain loot and you're going to gain new abilities. There's ranged and magic and melee and all kinds of abilities as well as all kinds of monsters. And depending on how difficult these settings are or difficult the story is, is how much more challenging it's going to be. Included in this will be the horror expansion that will come with personas. And these are things that are going to give you some kind of unique aspect to you, like a character charismatic, dignified, or pompous attitude with your character, or a leisurely, lazy, or spineless. And this is going to be added uh, as you go throughout the game. You're going to either be lowering in the persona or, or increasing persona, and things will happen depending on how you do that. So let me go ahead and show you how the app works, and just a couple of overview of how the game is going to be all together. So here we have the game Expedition, and what it's going to come with is a box. It'll come with a little piece of cards, rules, and all that kind of stuff, as well as the ability to look up online the rules. And you're going to be using a tablet, but you have to get one of your own, sorry, you can't. it's not going to come with the game. You're going to get a d20 die, a bunch of these tokens that are going to either mark health or the amount of monsters in the game, depending on what type of monster they are. These are all the monsters, and these are all the abilities. You've got range, magic, music, melee, and influence, uh, as well as you're going to have loot at one, two, and three three tiers total, and a discard cards to show where your discard pile goes. You've got personas, and you've got your adventurers to choose from, and then these things here are basically going to be your player reference cards. Everybody's going to get a player reference card along with an adventurer, and along with a persona when you have the horror. Now, when you start that off, you're going to simply choose whatever adventurer randomly and select his total health points, the highest value, which this guy has 12, as well as setting your persona at its base. So he right now is an arrogant dual soldier. So we'll go ahead and move these guys over here so you can see them a little better now and you got to see the player reference card right here. And as you can see he's got six melee cards. So if he had a different, if he had a bunch of different types like some of these guys are gonna have multiple options. Let's see if I can find one like here. Four music and two influence, four magic and two influence. But he is basically just a duelist so he's gonna get six melee cards to start with and you might get more throughout the game as you continue to play. So here is his six cards. And, and depending on the number of players is how many players you're going to uh, give uh, these cards to. So we'll just show a one player variant of the game. And once you do, you're going to begin by choosing the setting this app up and installing it. And to begin, you just simply hold a finger down for each character. Or everybody puts a finger down. So whether it's one player, you just go ahead and put it down and it'll pop up with one, right? So after that, it should pop up. And then you've got, you select your quest. You've got learning uh, one and two, the horror expansion. And then there's three quests available on the app, as well as making your own quest or exploring more quests that the community has made themselves. I'll just go ahead and do a random quest just to show you a little bit of how it works. So it tells you solo play, select two adventurers of your choice. So, okay, in this one, you're going to select two adventurers. And you do the same thing with them, with a the persona and the health and so on and so forth, right? So go ahead and set that like that. And then it'll tell you your draw, your starting abilities, and how it all works, right? And I, I'm guessing they can be different depending, right? Gather a 20-sided die and a helper card. Next, okay, it'll tell you, oh, a strange arrival, and have a story, right? And then you have the option to help villagers or attack the filthy peasants, and we'll attack them. Oh no, something bad happened, right? And so then it's going to go into this draw enemies phase, and it'll tell you you need an archer that is tier one. So you'll go ahead and try and find an archer that is tier one, and I think you'd find it in the bandit section. Yep, it has little bandit symbols there, so that makes it nice and easy. So let's see if I can find you, Mr. Mr. Archer. Rogue, veteran, thief. No, I don't see one in here. Maybe it's not in here. That's okay, though. We'll just go ahead and use one, just so you guys get an like, idea. And then we need a veteran as well, which he is here, so that works. And they're going to have their full starting health, right? So I'll just go ahead and place them on the discard. They're normally not going to go there, though, but they're going to start with their total health. Well, so we'll just say that it's a knight blade and it's a veteran instead of an archer. All right, let me see. Put you right here. Okay, and now, as you can see, they, they have different tiers on them, and they also have different... Uh, 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 bonuses. This one has a plus one damage. 
uh, from certain spells, and then a surge. Surge happens depending on how the fight goes, right? So we'll push next after we've gone ahead and got their char the minions and our characters all set up, and then it'll tell us how it works for solo play as well as what you need to do. You need to shuffle your deck up, which is going to be your deck of cards. These are my melee for this guy here, and he's going to draw three of them. The other player's got six ranged abilities, so I'll just go ahead and give him six range, and he'll shuffle his deck up as well, and he'll draw three, and you don't look at them, you wait. And as soon as you start the timer, then you're going to look at the cards, and you're going to choose one of them each. After you've done that, you're both going to hold down on the uh, thing, and it's going to instantly uh, stop it from happening. Uh, stop, stop continuing. So if you actually have the timer go at the end, like if it ends, you're going to have some trouble. You want to try and pick a card as fast as possible, but the best choice as possible as well. So now we've got uh, the horror, which is going to show that if you're... If your persona is at min or at max, you're going to have to reset it back to the middle and do whatever it says. And then you've got the yeah, adventurers at minimum persona must resolve their persona effect and reset their reason of all. Yeah, yeah. So uh, then it says roll. Uh, each adventure rolls a die for each ability they played. If greater than or less than the die roll, you'll succeed or fail. So I'll go ahead and show you these die, these, these cards over here. Just put them up here. All right, so we got Sharpened Edge and Rapid Fire. We'll just start with Rapid Fire here. And it says you need to succeed by getting greater than or equal to seven. So he'll roll that. 18 is going to choose which monster he wants to fight. And then it says success, do two damage and play an ability card from your hand if you can. And you can have possibly ability cards in your hand. So he'll lose some damage here. Just go ahead and put it from 15 to 30. 13. And then, of course, if he were to roll the 20, that'd be a crit, and he'd get to do something, something, a bonus of some sort. And if he rolls a 1, he's going to suffer some penalty. And the next player can go ahead and do their thing, 16, so that's greater than, that's a success to do 3 more damage, and maybe we'll go ahead and do 3 more damage to this guy here. And making sure to follow along with the type of damage it is, because he gets plus 1 damage from this type of a strike. And like I said, these would then be resolved, uh, and we, we would go ahead and put them in your discard pile. And it's kind of deck building, because you're going to be putting them back in after you shuffle your deck up. Uh, resolve and so solve any modifiers that there might be. Anybody with modifiers on their card affect the damage you receive, and the modifiers applied to the final damage value of each card played against them. Okay, so we'll go next, right? And then we're going to determine how well we did. How many monsters are left? How many adventurers are left? Did we, did we defeat them all, or did we not? And if we didn't, we're going to push next, okay? And also, to note too, after this point portion, if the monster's still alive, all the adventurers are going to take two damage. And it'll specify different amounts. And your health is going to be located on your card at the bottom here. He has 12 health. And if you get to zero, bad things can happen. So you got to be careful of that. But we'll just say we went ahead and defeated them, right? And then, of course, it'll tell you to shuffle. And it tells you exactly what you need to do and how you can level up and what kind of gear you can gain. And there's different loot and different types of tiers for loot. And you can go ahead and put these in front of you and use them. There's a tier one loot single use. And you can use it any time. Two adventurers gain one single person. Persona. And there's a plethora of different kinds as well. And then you're going to continue. You're going to go down the story. You're going to fight more things. I don't want to give any way any more. So that was just a basic taste of what the game is going to be like and how it kind of functions. So it's a basic idea of expedition, right? It's going to have a lot of different adventures in it. I like the aspect of the fact that there's tons of different types of adventures and the game kind of changes depending on what you're playing, depending on how much loot you're going to get or what kind of monsters you're going to fight. It has that story and I think you can create your own. If you can't, you definitely should because I like that aspect of the game being being able to not only make the adventures but also play things that your friends have made and this kind of gives you everything you need to do that right and even if it doesn't come on the app you could actually make up your own adventure on paper that wouldn't be difficult at all so if you like role-playing games with a little bit of the die rolling a little bit of the storytelling without you having to find a dm and also the whole little added aspect of time because time plays a role in this game if you just take too long maybe the enemy might surge maybe bad things might happen to you depending on the rules i know there's a basic aspect and there's also basic tutorials on here that you had to play thoroughly throughout the game. We played it at one, two, and three players, and we did the instructional, both the beginning and the horror one, and then we played one of the adventures, and it was fun. It worked very well. It was very challenging, which was awesome. I like that aspect as well. I thought it was going to be kind of a, just a, a roll-off, no big deal, but there is some challenging aspects, and there's definitely some choices that make a huge difference in the game, as well as the choices in the story that kind of determine what, what you're going to fight and how hard they're going to be, and there's a ton of different creatures and stuff like that you're going to fight. Maybe a Dark Young or a Shogoth or Night Gaunt or Dole, Soul Eater. Here's Cthulhu. You don't want to fight him, I bet. Um, there's Undead, there's Bandits, Beasts, and Fey. And there's a huge deck of different types of cards. And you'll be able to level up in the game and you can gain new cards and whatnot. And this one here has got a ton of cool stuff here. Lend a Hand, Scavenge. You're going to be able to lose Persona and gain Persona. You're going to be able to um, have other, other players do that, deal 4 damage, and then lose a Persona. So there's kind of a give and take there. But it works very well. If you like 
like these kind of games, right? It's going to be one more on the RPG style aspect of games, as well as the fact that it's going to be less GM less than normal. Although you could have somebody, I guess, play as the GM, but realistically, I think it's more fun to have everybody kind of interact. And it's all about the story and all about the experience. So if you like these kind of experience story driven games, this is definitely one you should check out. I really did enjoy myself. Normally, I'm not a big fan of these games, and I thought it was pretty good. I really like that aspect of story driven, as you know, the story driven aspect of the game and how it was all set up and making your own story specifically. So go ahead and check out Expedition in the comments or description below.